Next up, we have Star Raptor. Of all the early game normal and flying types, Star Raptor is likely to be the coolest in appearance. And we'd be willing to bet that this bird has definitely been the most popular, with nearly no Diamond Pearl or Platinum Trainer passing it up. It was also a fine member of Ash's team as well. And hey, at least he didn't give this one away, unlike another certain bird that he had from season one. Anyways, today we'll find out if Star Raptor soared through the skies of the competitive scene when we ask, how good was Star Raptor actually? Actually. And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. Star Raptor immediately stands out as a normal flying type with great power, a great ability, and most importantly, a powerful fighting move for coverage against rocks and steels that have plagued its compatriots since the onset of Pokemon. However, while these qualities are amazing, being normal and flying type has more drawbacks. While Raptor has a niche, it's quite far from top tier overused material, and as such, it dropped to underused. There, however, it was absolutely terrifying. Its speed and power were massively overwhelming by UU standards. The former was crucial since it naturally outran the majority of the tier by a mile, which made revenge killing it tough and gave it many opportunities to abuse the latter. Staple Pokemon of the tier, like Venusaur, Milotic, and Clefable, just got utterly destroyed, and even generally bulkier Pokemon like Weezing and Donphan folded. The few Pokemon that could resist its monstrous flying stab, such as Registeel, Rhyperior, Agron, and Steelix, got absolutely mauled by close combat, with the exception of Rotom and Lantern, who hardly qualified as a Brave Bird switch-in. It almost only needed two moves, so while Choice Band and Life Orb were the more intuitive common sets, some players even used a Sharp Beak variant with Substitute to scout switch-ins and thus make it easier to pick moves, while being even more terrifying if the opponent attempted to sacrifice a slower Pokemon. And with how fast Star Raptor was, it was pretty likely this be the case. Roost rounded out the set to offset recoil and ensure Raptor would be back for another beating. In fact, it was so good it was eventually banned, thus it resides in the limbo of Borderline, or BL. But not all is lost though as Star Raptor does have a small niche in OU, a tier in which its speed tier of 100 also happened to be shared by so many key Pokemon that it came to be a defining feature of the metagame. It's a big factor in what makes Jirachi, Zapdos, Flygon, Shaman, and Celebi so good. And while Star Raptor isn't quite on par with them, having that speed tier definitely gives it something to work with. Now there's no denying that it's got a lot of issues, it's stealth rock weak, it's got minimal bulk, and few resists, but it's also got a lot going for it. Intimidate has been called the best ability in the game, and while Star Raptor won't become a physical wall with it, the ability to help its team in checking many of the strong physical attackers in the tier gives it some defensive utility. Immunity to Earthquake and Shadow Ball and resistance to Seed Bomb and Seed Flare is not worth noting. However, the main reason to use Star Raptor is because it's strong. Adamant Choice Band devastates nearly the entire OU metagame. It two-hit KOs especially defensive Skarmory, Jirachi, and Bronzong with close combat, so many stall teams are put in a precarious position when Star Raptor is staring down their Blissey or Clefable. Even defensive Rotom a gets slammed by Brave Bird, which also straight up two-hit KO's offensive heat ran more than a quarter of the time without Stealth Rock. An intimidated Star Raptor still kills offensive Gyarados with Stealth Rock about 94% of the time, and offensive Tyranitar has a roughly 70% chance to be two-hit KO'd with Stealth Rock. It is an awesome kamikaze tactic to break open a hole in the opponent's team. When using Star Raptor, one must be analyzing the opponent's team from the get-go so they can figure out how to best utilize them in that particular matchup. Against offense or move is usually Brave Bird, unless it is double switched into something weak to close combat, like Heatran or Tyranitar. So the thinking comes more from how specifically the trainer is gonna get Star Raptor in the game. It's gonna require aggressive play, but that's the name of the game with Raptor anyway. This level of analysis tends to be more intensive than other Mons, who you think that one can usually autopilot with somewhat. Star Raptor's issues are pretty big, and thus it's obviously a little volatile, but its upsides can make it worth it in the hands of a capable trainer. Double Edge devastates Zapdos before you can get any ideas about it walling Raptor's main two moves, and even defensive sets have a chance to die after Stealth Rock. Even without the speed boost from Jolly, Star Raptor is plenty fast. It outruns Pokemon like Offensive Suicune and the Rotom appliances, and pummels them with Brave Bird. And yes, uninvested Rotom A gets absolutely trucked despite the resistance, taking 60 to 70%, while the naturally bulky Suicune gets walloped for 79 to 93%. We could amaze you with calculations all day, but take our word for it, despite its myriad issues, no one likes switching into Star Raptor, as it does have its niche in OU. 
Star Raptor got a few new toys in the generational shift. Final Gambit is a nice last move for a potential KO on something otherwise difficult to handle. Intimidate is a nice ability, but for Raptor's purposes, it just does not compare to Reckless, which turns Brave Bird into an absolute nuke against absolutely everything that isn't an impish Skarmory. Imagine Choice Specs Tornadus Hurricane, except its attacking stat is boosted from 349 to 372, and it gets a free life orb on top of that. And it's running off physical attack instead of special, so that the most common flying resist in the tier, which is bulky Tyranitar, gets two hit KO'd with Stealth Rock instead of walling it hard. But of course, there's a reason Tornadus is the tier staple, and Star Raptor is the nichest of the niche. The metagame got a lot faster, and Raptor's speed tier isn't nearly as impressive anymore. Alakazam, Starmie, Latios, Keldeo, Terrakion, Garchomp, and Thunderous T are incredibly common, and Ferrothorn, Poison Hero, Gliscor, and Landorus T with its Intimidate did not help matters either. However, none of these Pokemon want to switch into Raptor. It's just a matter of getting it in against something like Amoongus that it absolutely terrifies. It's a true kamikaze, and this niche can be explored, but hasn't much in Gen 5 OU's history, though it definitely has potential. Of course, such sparse usage in OU did lead to Star Raptor's drop to UU. However, even in spite of UU's increased power level, Star Raptor was absolutely overwhelming, crushing everything in sight in a manner similar to the previous generation, and it was booted to BL once again in the second round of UU testing. Its Choice Scarf set effectively holding Life Orb gave it more depth to its game. It can now safely beat you in a plethora of ways, and even something faster like Raikou wasn't a safe switch in, thus severely limiting options. Even the incredibly bulky Evio Light Porygon 2 couldn't handle the banned variants. Also, it's an interesting idea to look at the current UU tier list and just imagine how badly Star Raptor would demolish it now, since it was banned quite early into UU's existence in a metagame with much stronger threats that had yet to be banned themselves. And as for Gen 5 VGC, Star Raptor actually has a lot of nice qualities for the meta. Intimidate is always a great ability, Flying Stab is fantastic against the abundant grasses and fightings, especially backed by Flying Gem, and alongside Star Raptor's famed fighting coverage for Rock and Steels. The move Final Gambit is self-evident in how potentially game-breaking it can be, and Star Raptor could also use choice sets effectively, or support its team further with Tailwind. Randy Qual used Star Raptor to win the Nugget Bridge Major Tournament in late 2012 against World's Runner-Up Wolf Glick, but other than that we couldn't find any other placings, which makes sense because Star Raptor was hardly a staple of the metagame, but it did have its niche, and Randy Quad proved it, so props to him. After Aegislash, which completely dominated Star Raptor and had a chokehold on the metagame, was banned, Star Raptor kind of began to exist again. But it was more niche than ever before, with the metagame getting even faster and bulkier with the introduction of Megas like Scizor, Manectric, Lopunny, Pinsir, and Metagross, all getting in its way, as well as other problems such as Keldeo, Latios, Tornadus Therian, and Talonflame. It also had direct competition, since the Mega Charizards, Metacham, and Gardevoir all shared its speed tier and its propensity for vicious wall breaks. Finally, Rotom Wash running physical defense annoyed it greatly, especially with the lack of permanent sand to limit its leftovers recovery. Raptor didn't appreciate it as much since it had no bulk to speak of and was killing itself anyway. However, as rare as it was, on the few occasions an innovative player wielded it, it left destruction in its wake as its brave birds were still as ridiculous to switch into as before, especially against slow, bulky cores that became quite popular in the Oras metagame. In fact, it didn't just destroy Tangrowth and Amoongus, Calm Clefable was in severe danger of death from full health, and specially defensive Gliscor, of all things, could be one hit KO'd. Final Gambit was also potentially always great. For example, removing Rotom could be huge for a plethora of Pokemon. But overall though, it was extremely fringe, and only to be used by the most innovative or maybe insane players. But with all of that said, it was still too powerful for underused, and even among Megas, it was still one of the strongest Pokemon in the tier, and was basically impossible to switch into with its classic Brave Bird close combat combat combination, except for Dual Blade, but that was still 4 hit KO'd and had no recovery, so even Stealth Rock 6% alongside Raptor's 26-31% to Brave Bird added up. Plus, upon seeing it in Team Preview, Star Raptor could just U-turn on the Switch and bring in Pursuit Crocodile, only having one real safe counter when Raptor's good speed allowed it to dominate so much of the rest of the meta, helped it earn its third straight BL placing. Star Raptor and its bag of tricks found a decent amount of popularity in the 2014 VGC metagame. In spite of Aegislash, Intimidate helped against a plethora of physical attackers like Talonflame, Mega Kangaskhan, and Mega Mawile, and Brave Bird was great stab against targets like Amoongus and Scrafty. And of course, Final Gambit was game-breaking as ever. In fact, to abuse its hard-hitting moves and Final Gambit, almost all of the Star Raptor variants in VGC 2014 were Choice Scarf, and almost all of them ran max HP and max speed for Final Gambit, obviously, which at level 
level 50, its max damage is 192 HP. So yeah, Star Raptor was pretty solid this generation in VGC, and as such has a decent amount of placings. With Star Raptor, and I apologize if I butcher any of your names, Tony Cheung, aka Chinese Dude, won the Seattle Regionals, Jack Pendleton reached third at the Athens Regionals, Dane O reached second at the Melbourne Regionals, Major Bowman reached second at the Orlando Premier Challenge, Nicholas Saman reached 36 at Masters, and Paul Chua reached third at Seniors of the US Nationals. Giragumi reached top four at the Australian Nationals, and even at Worlds, Star Raptor made quite the impact there, with Mark McQuillan reaching top eight in the Seniors Division, and placing 13th and 8th on Link Yoshi Mario's team, aka Ashton Cox, and Dane O'Meara's teams, respectively, in Masters, with Ashton Cox eschewing Intimidate and Final Gambit for a reckless choice bander. Finally, Andrew Burley also reached 14th with Star Raptor at the Philadelphia Regionals that counted for 2015, but used the 2014 rule set. Now, still in Gen 6, in the actual 2015 metagame, Emma Williams reached second at the Poke Melbourne Spring Tournament, Aya Bone reached fourth at the Indonesian Premier Challenge, Aaron G reached top eight at the St. Charles Premier Challenge, Patrick M reached second in the Seniors at the Australian Nationals, Jamie Miller and Daniel Marjonvic reached 11th and 13th respectively at the German Nationals, and Jamie Miller again reached seventh at the UK Nationals, where Terence Dre also used Star Raptor to reach 12th. Finally, Jamie Miller once more used Star Raptor at Worlds, where he unfortunately finished outside of top 40. But good work anyway, Jamie. You are quantifiably the world's biggest Star Raptor fan. So yeah, overall, Star Raptor is actually pretty solid in Gen 6 VGC. OU gets tougher and tougher each generation, and Star Raptor has a difficult time keeping up with the vast array of new threats, threatening it every which way with speed and bulk. It could conceivably be of some use like an Oraz, but that use has not yet been seen in the metagame. And unfortunately, while it is feasible that it could pull some Brave Bird or Final Gambit action, most players are going to go with the proven standards. For instance, one was just better off using, like, Kartana or something. And as for Yu Yu, Star Raptor was banned in the beta period, as there would be no letting it terrorize the tier in this generation either. Yu Yu has learned its lesson, and unfortunately, it's just not that into Star Raptor. This time, they got the jump on it and preemptively saved the tier before being brutally beaten back by Brave Bird. And as for Gen 7 VGC, Star Raptor did make a small return, although we couldn't really find info on what it actually does, as it does have some placements. Mitchell Davies notably reached 7 with it at the Dallas Regionals, using a Scarf variant to help set up Trick Room Mimikyu, and as he put it, potentially win games in 4 turns. Pavel Podkoryotov reached 2nd with Star Raptor at the Russian Nationals, and Giovanni Costa used it to reach 5th at the Salt Lake Regionals. And with that, it's nice to see that some players were still making use of Star Raptor's unique talents. And that's it, so how good was Star Raptor actually? Well, as a BL lifer, it occupies a unique niche within the annals of competitive Pokemon history. Its signature pairing of Brave Bird and Close Combat, alongside some great abilities, has left destruction behind it in every tier it's been in. While it's usually overwhelmed in OU, it's been way too strong for Yu Yu every time. And it's also been quite decent in VGC, performing well whenever it appeared thanks to a litany of solid traits, proving useful despite its flaws. In fact, overall, Star Raptor can boast being one of the best non-OU Pokemon of all time. And for once, I'm glad Game Freak actually makes the early route birds useful, although Gen 6's bird might have been overdoing it. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know, what do you think of competitive Star Raptor? How would you change it, etc, etc? Do you think the early route birds need to be stronger? Nah, you probably don't think that. Anyways, whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And of course, to vote for next week's Pokemon, comment on the latest community posts on this channel, that will most likely go up around the same time as this video's release. And shout out to the patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.